TGC Requiem here. We're back with some Legacy Elves. Um, got pretty much handled the first match. I'm a little bit rusty. Haven't played much Legacy since November of last year, where I top 16 to SCG item, uh, SCG side event at one of their opens. Um, and then got really sick and just have been playing Modern since then, basically. Uh, just picked up Legacy Elves to play some with my buddies the other day, and so I thought I'd do maybe a Legacy Elves video. Um, if you are interested, on Twitter sometimes I'll throw up a post on uh, which deck I should play this week, and so this was one of the options I put out this week, and that's what it was voted for. So if you are interested in that, or you're on the Twitterverse, feel free to follow me and, and be involved. I think we're going to keep this hand. Um, and got a lot of good tools. If we didn't, yeah, I don't know that there's really a whole lot that we're looking to ramp into here, so I'm just going to go Forest and the Nettle Sentinel. Like we got an elves player bug, death right shaman. So maybe a little salt eye. Again, I'm gonna just forewarn everybody that I'm a little rusty on the format, haven't been playing much. So, along with all the changes that are going on from the miracles ban. I'm just not quite a, a, as up on the uh, the happenings at the moment. So if our opponent is on elves, and he was just trying to throw us off with his black mana deathrite shaman. Oh yeah, here we are. Glimpse of nature. So this is probably an elves opponent. We may have an elves mirror here. We're actually going to have access to probably two... lands off deathrite shaman. Gay is cradle for three, that's five, six, seven. So not really enough. I was thinking possibly we could get an early green sun zenith. He's going to cast the Deathrite Shaman again just to get another card draw. I don't know that I've ever played... That's not 100% true. I, in Columbus, SCG Columbus, the event that I top 16 with Elves, um, I played against Elves once there. Beyond that, I don't know that I've ever played against elves before. So we've got a lot of options here. We certainly could Green Sun Zenith into a few things. I think we may want to get a Dryad Arbor at some point. I'm thinking we maybe go... Elvish Visionary, see what we draw, possibly a Dryad Arbor. Um, and then that would allow us to cradle into Behemoth the next turn, which I don't know that our opponent 
is necessarily threatening us with. So, do we need Nettle Sentinel? Don't suppose we need Nettle Sentinel. If we drew off Visionary into a natural order, would we even be able to do lethal? It would be 5 plus 3, 8, 8, it would be 16, and he'd have 3 blockers. I mean, it would be like virtual lethal. I think we wait for the next turn, so we're going to... Eat the land, get a green. Gonna play the cradle, we're gonna tap for three. We're gonna untap the death right shaman, returning the nettle sentinel. We're gonna exile the misty. Adding another green. Gonna get a visionary. Crater hoof. Well, that's even better. We can probably just hard cast crater hoof next turn, possibly. Um, it's less mana. there's any lands to even access, and I plan on eating that land on his turn. So I think we're just gonna... Actually, hold on, let's think this through. If we green sun zenith for a visionary, we would have five, maybe six, so we wouldn't necessarily be able to cast Crater Hoof next turn. Um, if we get a Heritage Druid, we definitely can. If we get a Dryad Arbor, we would have five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we just want to get a Dryad Arbor here. We're just going to get another Dryad Arbor. Actually, maybe we want a Quirion Ranger. Yeah, actually, I want a Quirion Ranger here. Um, the reason we want the Quirion Ranger. is this will allow us to untap our Deathrite Shaman to eat the Verdant Catacombs when our opponent goes for it. Um, returning a forest to our hand, that still gives us six to tap for, and then we can replay the forest next turn to get our eight mana for lethal. So uh, that's why we did that. And we can't untap the Deathrite Shaman now. I mean, if our opponent's playing essentially a normal version of elves, we've pretty much guaranteed ourselves a win unless they can go off this turn.
So there is a chance here if they got natural order. We gotta go for the shaman though. And if they if we Alright, so I don't think they can get to natural order and no, okay, now they can. <laughs> off and on, off and on. I still don't have lethal. So now he's used his wirewood symbiote. As long as he doesn't get another symbiote down, we should be able to steal this last land, though I don't really know how relevant that's going to be at this point. He's either got us, probably, or doesn't. We're kind of just in wait-and-see mode. We really need him to need... Ugh. Well, at least he's already used his symbiote. We just really need him to need that land at some point. Okay, he's already used his symbiote. And I don't care if he eats the Verdant with the scavenging ooze. We just don't want his shaman to get it. That's fine with me. Have at it, bud. Looks like he's run out of mana here. So we should have him. So this is free, just makes us get more damage in. And that's a whole lot of damage. Ooh. Harry. All right, so I'm gonna turn four win there against elves. We were on the play, which helps a lot. Um, the draw GTA could be pretty good out of the board. Natural order certainly important. Glimpses are important. Um, Could try and pie the needle heritage druid, but it almost hurts us as much. Kind of just want to bring in cabals. I don't like over sideboarding um, in the side or in the this matchup. I don't think we need reclamation sage. Scavenging ooze could be okay, but it's honestly um, probably not necessary. Matchup is unlikely to be super grindy, so we could probably cut a visionary. Looking for speed. Maybe one wirewood symbiote. It's possible we should have cut a uh, glimpse there, but oh, this is a terrible hand. 
we definitely don't want both crater hoofs. Opponent mulliganed as well, that's good. This is actually pretty decent. Um, if we lead on death right shaman, she, yeah, yeah. Probably gonna just plan on leading on death right shaman. Opponent's determining. Um, I don't think that's really what we want. Watch us fall shy on lands. Nope. So we can go. I'm just trying to think if we go Query and Ranger. We don't need Query and Ranger. We want Deathrite Shaman for sure. I think we lead on Forest into Deathrite Shaman. That allows us to make sure we have a. I guess they're not going to get the fetch anyway, right? Even if they play a Shaman this turn, they're not going to be able to do anything with it. So might as well thin our, start thinning our deck. So now Quirin Ranger is going to offer us quite a bit of mana acceleration with this glimpse. Really want to hope that we, especially if he cracks the catacombs, really want to try and get a lucky glimpse chain going here. Or at least really need like another one drop creature. Most ideally that would be uh, Heritage Druid. Alright, so assumption is glimpse is going bye bye there. Crater Hoof, beautiful. Not so much. Again, just kind of thinning out here. We can get more damage eating the Thought Seas. We're just going to attack here. Really try and set ourselves up to maybe get a guy's cradle to get us where we need to be here. We just there's there's no reason for us to flip the bayou. Doesn't really buy us anything. Slows us down towards crater hoof if we're gonna have to hard cast it. I don't imagine, yeah, I was going to say, I don't imagine he... So we can actually do a couple things here.
really kind of slows us down in case he has a I suppose we could have kept that in case he Cabal therapied. No, because he can still cast Cabal before we can even eat it. Don't really see a whole lot of reason again to bounce and eat the glimpse here. It's something we could do, but I just don't see it bringing any value. Still just kind of looking for a cradle. Heritage Druid would get us three, six, seven. Uh, we could get to eight mana off of a uh, cradle. So good that the opponent passed. Yeah, we got four. We got access to. Oh yeah, so that should do it. Um, we can tap for three, eat for four. It's going to be four, five, six, play a land seven, yeah. So I think we have exactly eight, but um, And that's going to be six, 16, 11, 27. Trample damage. Oh no, sorry. Plus six more. Seven. Six. So 34 trample damage. Did I do my math right there? Still feel like I'm wrong. 36 trample damage. <laughs> What is he got going on? So is he going to abrupt decay something here? Okay. Alright, so we got there. Turn four again, this time on the draw. Again, I just personally prefer to play um, fairly thin in terms of trying to disrupt our opponent. Um, especially on the draw, because um, they're already going to be going fast. And if hopefully they play it's the, the old, like, okay, they can try and sideboard to beat us. There's, like, three things that can happen. They can draw their sideboard cards um, and not hit what they need to hit. They can um, draw their sideboard cards and hit what they need to hit. Or they could just not draw their sideboard cards. And two of those th three things favor us, but again, I think it's always kind of a contextual argument to talk about, but anyway, uh, fun little nerve-wracking knowing how explosive this deck can be, and that neither of us really can do a whole lot to stop each other, but uh, yeah, so that puts us at one and one, that makes me feel a little bit better, and three, two in the league so far, and that was a two, oh, and of course I'm terrible at keeping up with this, but two, oh, in the match, and we will be back with the third match soon.